The universe is filled with exotic objects, and some of them are so extreme that it sort of blows your mind when you try to imagine what they're actually like. And when it comes to some of the more exotic objects, we usually talk about various types of black holes and their interaction with the nearby environment. But there are some objects that are not black holes that are even more extreme, with some of these objects being completely out of this world. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing one of the recent discoveries of one of these really extreme objects that the scientists usually refer to as the Black Widow Pulsar. The objects that are just absolutely extreme in every single way, to the point that they actually end up destroying the stars that are very close to them, to some extent absorbing everything that is destroyed as well, and for this reason they're known as the Black Widows named after the iconic spider that's known to consume its mate. But as you can probably imagine, these are not caused by black holes. They're caused by a very special case of what's known as a millisecond pulsar, a neutron star that spins ridiculously fast, producing extremely powerful astrophysical jets that you can see in this video right here. With the jets sort of acting like two really really powerful lasers that essentially completely destroy the nearby star, planet, or whatever else is close to this object. And this particular name was actually given to this unusual millisecond pulsar binary that was originally discovered back in 1988. The system known as PSR B1957 plus 20, whose X-ray and optical image you can see right here. And this system is approximately 6500 light years away from us, and when it was originally discovered, the scientists couldn't really tell what's going on here but eventually realized they're looking at something that resembles this. There's a very large brown dwarf or potentially some kind of a super Jupiter that every 9.2 hours seems to orbit around a very massive, very dense object. The object that seems to cause the atmosphere of this super Jupiter to completely burn off, creating a huge bow shock and a very large structure visible from very far away distance. With all this eventually being explained as the very powerful outflows or winds from the neutron star most likely just burning everything away. And in terms of other properties, these objects often resembled a typical millisecond pulsar with over 300 of these millisecond pulsars discovered and catalogued to date. As a matter of fact, only a few days ago, another team whose paper you can find in the description discovered the most distant and the brightest of these millisecond pulsars located in a galaxy Large Magellanic Cloud. But the thing is, for most of these millisecond pulsars, the reason they produce these jets is because they're slowly slowing down and they use the energy of the rotation to produce these jets. And so normally, young pulsars with a lot of emissions appear in isolation, they appear completely by themselves. But more than half of millisecond pulsars that are not young usually have some kind of a stellar partner which most likely suggests that by eating the material from their partner, they can actually sort of reinvigorate themselves and create more rotation and thus more power and more jets. As a matter of fact, this right here makes a lot of scientific sense. By having a partner, they can actually absorb a lot of energy from the partner and thus be extremely bright and spin extremely fast. But how do millisecond pulsars exist without a partner? Why is it that certain millisecond pulsars don't seem to have anything in their vicinity? That's actually a pretty big mystery that no one could solve for a very long time. And so in the last few years, or in the last few decades really, the scientists have actually discovered quite a few of these so-called black widow pulsars that are essentially neutron stars that seem to be absorbing and actively destroying their partner. And a lot of these objects are very intriguing, for a very simple reason. They seem to emit quite a lot of gamma rays, visible with telescopes like Fermi, but they also emit quite a lot of optical light as well. And that, of course, is one of the reasons why so many scientists were stumbled by this discovery when some of the original data started to come out. And it took them a while to realize that all of this optical light is most likely caused by the object orbiting around the neutron star that's essentially presenting its very bright side to us once in a while, and then turns around and shows us the dark side. And so we're actually seeing the optical light coming from some sort of an object that's actively heated up by the extremely powerful jets from the neutron star, which also creates these huge formations around the system that unfortunately block a lot of other radiation that would be otherwise visible. And so explaining these objects actually took quite some time. And I guess what's really interesting here is that these uh, particular objects, these um, planets or these stars, 
are normally only irradiated on one side. One side can be extremely hot, up to about 12,000 Kelvin, and the other side can actually stay pretty cool, pretty cold. And some of these systems, like this one right here, discovered in 2012, are generally already super extreme. For example, here the neutron star is already sort of at its mass limit. In other words, it can potentially even reach enough mass to go supernova and to create a black hole. And it also seems to have an extremely tight orbit with its partner, with a single orbit taking just a little bit longer than 93 minutes. So this is a pretty extreme system already. But the question here has always been, what exactly happens to the system after, let's just say, a few million or even billion years? Can this star be completely eaten away and disappear into nothingness? Or an even better question is, those planets that have been discovered previously around other pulsars, have they been actually created in this way? Could these unusual neutron stars, by burning all of the material away from a typical star, slowly turn it into, for example, a brown dwarf first? And then this brown dwarf could maybe turn into some kind of a Jupiter gas giant and eventually even turn into a terrestrial planet. Check out the previous video on which system that has three different planets orbiting a pulsar that might actually explain this in a little bit more detail, somewhere right there or in a description. And so today some scientists actually think that this is exactly how those lonely millisecond pulsars are produced. They get all of this energy by destroying their partner, and the only reason that they appear to be lonely is really because they basically just ate the partner, it's no longer there. Or if it is there, it's probably just an extremely tiny object, possibly resembling some kind of a moon or possibly even turning into some kind of an asteroid-like object. But now we have this new study with the most extreme black widow known to us. In this case, detected by the Zwicky transient facility that's designed to scan the entire sky and look for various differences or various, I guess, variations when something changes over a period of certain time. And although it's really good at detecting, for example, supernova, in this case, the scientists wanted to see if they can find something that basically blinks, increases and decreases in brightness periodically. And naturally, the scientists did discover something, and it was really strange. First of all, like a typical object that usually repeats, it resembled a sine wave. But unlike other sine waves, there were quite a lot of changes depending on the frequency observed. Certain wavelengths were showing increase in brightness of approximately 13 times. And they lasted for approximately 63 minutes. Now if this was a typical star, or for example a typical pulsar, we would not be seeing so much variation in the frequencies. Something else was causing this, and something that was very extreme, something that was never seen before. And so this right here is most likely the best explanation, with this object currently being responsible for emitting ridiculous amounts of energy. With the side facing the neutron star very likely being in these extremely high temperatures of approximately 12 to 15,000 Kelvin, yet the dark side, the other side, being relatively cool, only approximately a couple of thousand degrees. And the reason why this object is so hot on this side is actually because the illumination from these astrophysical jets is equivalent to approximately three times as much energy as our sun produces every second. So if we were to take our sun and to essentially focus it in those astrophysical jets and start illuminating a single object with them, you would get something that you see right here. You would get an object that would start burning and would start releasing all of its atmosphere, creating a kind of a disk around the system. And what's really interesting about the system is that it also displays what's known as the hydrogen absorption lines. It means that there is definitely hydrogen gas around the system that's absorbing a lot of the spectrum. Which of course suggests that the object being burned is most likely some kind of a small star or maybe some kind of a really large brown dwarf. And because this is so far the closest black widow to us, the closest such object to us, it also presents a lot of opportunities for future studies. Although at the moment, there are still a lot of questions about the potential formation history of this particular object, especially because it does seem to have yet another star, a third object, orbiting at a distance of about 600 astronomical units with a period of about 12,000 years. And so trying to figure out what's happening in the system and how it was actually created is going to be one of the bigger questions for some of the upcoming studies about this unusual system. But for now, I guess it takes us just a little bit closer in our understanding of how these unusual millisecond pulsars are formed and how they actually evolve over time as well. More importantly, it helps us realize that these objects are actually quite prevalent and many of them are pretty close to us and have been missed by previous surveys. 
And so discovering more of these really strange objects somewhere out there is going to be a priority for many different studies. But for now, that's pretty much all we know. Once we learn more, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Also, check out some of the similar videos on this topic in the description below, and support the channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.